Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to start a series of videos all dealing with the electronically commutated motor, the ECM. Um, to get started with these motors, there are a few things that you're going to need. And so this first video is going to be um, how to make um, one of the pieces of test equipment that I want to have in my collection. Um, so we're going to start with that. Okay, what we're going to need today is first of all we're going to need an old electric cord and we're going to need a plug that was removed from a scrap furnace it is a power plug for the GE ECM motors. It's a five pin plug. Uh, you'll notice here that it has three wires and a jumper. The three wires are your 110, your neutral, and your ground. And then this jumper tells the motor that we are wanting to run it on 120 volts. So, now, if you come across one of these that does not have the jumper, like this one here, then you can either just totally remove these two wires, or just not connect them at the other end, leave them basically parked. You have the same plug as that one, but without the jumper you're telling the unit that you want um, the motor to run on 240 volts. Most of these motors are dual voltage and can be configured differently whether they have that jumper or not. So today what we're going to be doing is building a cord so that we can bench test an ECM motor on 110 volts. So today I'm going to use that plug and set this one off to the side. And basically all we're going to do is we are going to take this plug and this cord and tie them together and make a nice little patch cord for bench testing our ECM motor. Okay, to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to set that off to the side and we're going to start with our plug. We're going to leave our jumper. Um, I'm actually going to leave the jumper exposed to help me identify it in case I do make a 240 volt patch cord. Um, to do this job, you're going to need, like I said, the plug and the cord. And then along with that, you're going to need either soldering iron or soldering gun and solder. Um, you could use butt splice connectors or wire nuts if you want to but I want to make it a very nice looking job so I'm going to use the soldering gun and solder to join the two wires together. Then I also have my little butane torch and some heat shrink tubing of the proper size, some scissors and wire cutters or wire strippers. So that's all we need to build this patch cord. We're going to start here. Okay, let's get started. Now the first thing I want to do, I'm going to try to do this one-handed, so bear with me a little bit here. The first thing I want to do is I want to cut this set of wires down to a more manageable size. And I'm going to cut the hot, and then I'm going to cut about an inch and a half farther away on the neutral and maybe there we go and then I'm going to cut another inch and a half or so down like so so we get rid of some of this all this excess that we're not going to need Gives us a nice clean little plug there. And I'm 
that's going to be a little more manageable. Okay, now for the next step, we have to cut our cord so that it will mate up to our plug. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get an idea how far back I need to strip it and I'm going to go placing the longest one up against the short on this plug. We come down probably into right in here and I'm going to strip this back. Okay. Okay, so now we've got our plug prepped and ready to go and we've got our cord stripped back. We've got the main jacket off of it. And now we need to stagger our connections to match the stagger of the other piece. So I'm going to lay them in the end and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut the green one to match. And I'm going to cut the white one to match. And you got a little room to play here, but we want to get them as nice as we can. So there we go. Those are prepared to be joined. Now we have to strip the jackets back on each of the ends and solder them together. Okay, and there we have all six wire ends stripped back and ready to be soldered. Um, one thing you do want to remember before you do solder them together go ahead and take your heat shrink tube and get those pieces cut and in place before you solder because once you've soldered the wires together you're not going to get the tubing on there so make sure you get that done first to be easy to forget. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to cut the uh, heat shrink tubing get a slit on the wires and prepare to solder. Okay, so now we've got our wires are prepped for soldering. We have our heat shrink tube slid on the wire to cover up the joints after we've soldered. And then we have heat shrink tube on the main jacket to slide up and cover the whole assembly when we're done. So now we're going to move on to soldering. Okay, now there we have the three lines soldered together. So that looks pretty good. We're going to slide the heat shrink tube up over each connection now to seal that up. Like so. And then we're going to take our little butane torch here.
Okay, so now we've sealed up those connections. We'll let it cool just a little bit and then we'll slide this heat shrink tube up over all of it to make a nice neat job. Okay, and now I have let it cool and I've slid the heat shrink tubing from the jacket on up over these connections and wires. And as I said before, I'm going to leave the jumper exposed. I'm not going to tie it back into the heat shrink tubing. I want to be able to see it very clearly so that I know positively that that is my cord for the 120 volts. So being able to see that jumper, I, I know instantly that's the right cord. So now all we have to do is shrink that tubing and we have a completed cord. I don't think I can do that one-handed, so I'll go ahead and do that and show you the end result. Alrighty, and there is our finished product. We have a nice cord. Everything's sealed up nice and tight. Everything looks good. We have our first tool necessary to bench test DCM motors. And we have the 5-pin plug configured for 120 volts and it should snap snap right into the motor okay so that worked out well we plug this in the wall and we have 120 volts we've got the high voltage to our motor we're ready to test it the next step will be working on the cord for controlling the motor so that we can trigger it make it run and that will be in another video this one looks like it's been a success I hope you liked it and uh, check back with me for the next one thanks for watching